Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by the following. By Coca-Cola, serving Alaska quality soft drinks since 1937. Chugach Alaska Corporation, committed to profitability, celebration of their heritage, and ownership of their lands. And by the Public Information Office of the North Slope Borough. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome public broadcasting stations in Florida. We have some new viewers in Nebraska, in Wyoming, and hello to our viewers in Montana and Arizona, in Southern California and in New Mexico. We welcome you to our native programming. On today's program, we travel to Savunga, Alaska, where spirituality is intricately embroidered in their daily lives. We travel to the Flathead Indian Reservation in Montana and learn about their beautiful history of their native art, which is alive and well today. Earlier this week, I spoke by telephone to the Canadian Indian rock group Cash Tin. We have that interview, all that plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. The Native American U.S. Marine convicted of espionage in 1987 hopes to gain his freedom while the U.S. intelligence community is in an uproar over the case of Aldrich Ames. Ames had been spying for the former Soviet Union and the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency says Ames was responsible for compromising CIA actions and agents. Now lawyers for Clayton Lone Tree say the Ames case was a setup and that Lone Tree was a handy victim. They plan to take their case to military courts to free see about the Navajo Winnebago man's release. Lone Tree's been serving time in a federal penitentiary in Leavenworth, Kansas. The Bureau of Indian Affairs may escape more federal personnel reductions this year. Indian Country Today reports the Clinton administration has been trying to slim down the massive federal workforce and so far the BIA has been ordered to cut 612 full-time positions. Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs Ada Deer reports that the agency will not have to absorb any more cuts and that more business will be conducted down on the agency tribe level and not in Washington, D.C. The members of the Intertribal Bison Association are hoping to save the lives of thousands of bison, they hope. The group is proposing to capture and relocate as many of the buffalo as possible to keep them from being shot by ranchers as, or, as they wander out of the protection of Yellowstone National Park. Local livestock owners charge the wandering Tatanka spread brucellosis, a disease that causes domestic cattle to have stillborn calves. The Intertribal Bison Association says the relocated herds could provide food, help improve prairie conditions, and provide an important cultural link for many natives. Members of the Klinkets tribe in Klawak, Alaska have decided overwhelmingly to ban any more courts claiming to represent them without their permission. They voted this week after a self-appointed judge named Rudy James conducted a trial for two young Clinkets accused of beating and robbing a pizza delivery driver in Washington state. The two youths were banished to solitary confinement on islands off the coast of southwest, southeast Alaska, that is. The Klawak Cooperative Association is the federally recognized governing body for the village, and its membership voted 99 to 7 to, to prohibit any further such tribal courts. Native American advocates are angry about an Ohio museum's collection of human remains. Some, they say, belong to their ancestors. Their target is the Allen County Museum in Lima, Ohio. A leader of the American Indian Intertribal Association charges that the remains should have been given a proper burial and not put up for study. Over 30 natives and supporters from the region and Canada have conducted a protest for the third time. The museum's collection of human bones are on loan to Ohio State University, where archaeology students are studying them. And finally, many of us in the news media profession have always tried to interest young native people in the news business, and now a group of Mashantucket Pequot children have taken matters into their own hands. The Children of the Nation newspapers is being published this summer as a project of the Tribal Summer Youth Reading Enrichment Program. 
Tribal reporters aged 9 through 12 devoted their time to reporting reservation news, photos, poetry, and artwork. The Pequot young people demonstrated their dedication to the news profession by hand delivering their final press run of 75 newspapers. This is Native News Across the Nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fife. Thank you, Gary Fife. Let's travel now to the top of the world where the good people of the Arctic bring us the North Slope Borough News with our own Tina Corwin. On October 4th, North Slope Borough residents will be voting on a variety of bond propositions. These propositions will authorize the borough to sell bonds to finance capital construction projects in North Slope Borough villages. The construction being financed includes housing, school improvements, emergency equipment, airport upgrades, and funding for the North Slope Cultural Center. North Slope Borough Administration of Finance Director James Sharp explains. Basic criteria for developing the projects each year for presentation of the voters is that, is that they, they meet um, the criteria of life, health, and safety for the North, North Slope Borough as well as as to uh, support the importance of education. Selling bonds is like taking a loan out to finance current borough capital needs. The bonds are offered for sale to the general public through stock exchanges like the one on Wall Street in New York. The borough then pays the bonds back with interest. Since the formation of the borough, bond sales have financed the construction of almost all new facilities and the services available to North Slope residents from health clinics and schools to buses and medevac helicopters. The North Slope Borough Department of Health and Social Services Health Education Office will sponsor the Barrow Health Fair on Saturday, October 15th. With the support of community volunteers and local health and safety organizations, health fairs offer screening for common medical problems and educate participants about how to take an active role in developing healthy lifestyles. During the last two years, the Health Education Office has sponsored health fairs in every village on the North Slope. According to Assistant Health Educator Edith Nishoaluk, residents have responded by coming in for blood pressure, vision, dental, and other types of screening, including confidential HIV AIDS testing. I, I believe the most important um, health issue at the moment is um, HIV AIDS, and people are starting to uh, take notice and to also get tested, and that's great. Uh, that means that's a healthy sign of a community, of uh, residents um, taking that choice. According to the Health Education Office, health fairs stimulate and reinforce healthy behaviors, bring health providers and clients together, educate the public, offer some direct health services such as immunization and special testing and detect unsuspected diseases in the community. Health fairs are a good opportunity to learn um, about some things that you can prevent in, in your um, health, in your body. So uh, that's what I, I really enjoy doing is um, educating the people and the health providers, um, give them the information before they get sick and so that way they'll prevent um, whatever, you know, that's coming. A graduate student from the Chinese Academy of Sciences is beginning a new research project on the eyes of bowhead whales, ring seals, and caribou with support from the North Slope Borough. Representatives of the Academy's Institute of Oceanology visited Barrow last week to work with the Borough Wildlife Management Department and collect specimens, which were donated by subsistence hunters. Alaska's North Slope is the site of China's first venture in Arctic science. The new study is the latest development in a continuing relationship between the Chinese scientists and the borough's wildlife management department. Scientific exchanges on bowheads have resulted in a more positive view of the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission's position for subsistence whaling by the Chinese representative to the International Whaling Commission. Barrow School children on September 16 placed a marker and flowers on the final resting place of a young girl whose body was exposed by the erosion of the Ukupsi Bluff in Barrow this summer. 
The Ipalak Elementary School students were particularly interested in the girl because the discovery of her remains coincided with an archaeology unit they were studying this fall. In class, they talked about her life and made a card that was buried with her body. Rare artifacts were found with the girl's remains, and these are now being conserved in Barrow. The remains were laid to rest in the new Barrow Cemetery in August, next to the famous frozen family found in the same area in 1983. The girl is estimated to have lived between 200 and 500 years ago. For Heartbeat Alaska and the North Slope Borough, I'm Tina Corwin. Kuyanakbuk. As I listen to the people of Alaska, they're all telling me the same things. We value work. We want opportunities not only for now, but for our kids too. We value education, but we want the school to have some discipline and teach more vocational skills and trades. We have to stop crime and stop it now. The Alaskan people used to believe that the ultimate opportunity and quality of life was here. It can be again, and this is my goal. <laughs> Alaska families and small businesses have to make tough decisions every day. It's time government faced the same hard choices. I'll protect funding for our schools, but I'll veto any state budget that spends more than the year before. I'm Tony Knowles. We've had enough overblown promises. It's time to set our priorities straight. It's time to set a new direction for Alaska. Responsibility counts. Tony Knowles for governor. Let's travel now to Savunga, Alaska. The people on Savunga live on St. Lawrence Island. They speak Siberian Yupik. Everyday life for these people include hunting and gathering as they have for thousands of years. With a subsistence science video project, it's integrating Western education with traditional knowledge. Video from the late Daniel Hausberg shows us exactly how spirituality is intricately embroidered into their daily life. <laughs> In Savunga, Alaska, all too often, the Western ways are seen as working against and subverting local control of resources and threatening the traditional native ways. Yet the elders acknowledge the need to be able to live in both worlds, to retain their own ways while learning from this other culture. The people of Savunga have accepted this different way of knowing, integrating the Western education into their life, and still they continue to live as they have since their beginnings, knowing something different. And also one time my boys went to a whaling camp with Nathan and Chester's. And my brother told me a story about they were having, they were, the government was giving us only one quota for whale. And it was re very sad if, um, if we could, if we, if they don't have a CB radio, I'm sure they would get one more whale without knowing somebody caught one. They have a CP radio at that time, and they gave only one code at that time, and one, one boy who was a young man, Hunter, I'm sure he was going to get whale. He said, next, watch it, you can, if the whale come up, you can strike it. You can throw your uh, harpoon in. Okay, there, get ready. And he was getting ready, and 
said, my, we're going to get well, we're going to tell other, other boats that were getting well. When he turned on his radio, everybody was still hollering, Nelson's boat caught a whale. And that uh, cap boat captain, the young man, he said, oh, don't strike it. Somebody already caught one. With tears, the harpoon striker put down his harpoon on the boat, and then he touched the tail of uh, the whale on the tail. I call it, I just figure it out with tears, because I'm sure it, it was like that, because we cry. When we heard it, we cry for it. And then, um, if if we if the men are not obeying the law, they would get I don't know how many whale, but they they try to obey what government said, so on, they only caught one whale that time. The law says only take so many marine mammals. The people of Savunga abide by this law as they have naturally for centuries. They are also trying to educate the Western world. Their practice of environmental conservation has sustained them in this tough environment for centuries. They communicate with the bounty from the sea, and the marine mammals give themselves to the hunters, perhaps knowing they will sustain life, a spiritual knowing and understanding that nothing will be wasted. Put through, through on his, uh harpoon on the whale. I'm sure he was giving his, you know, he was just, the whale was giving his body like this, just like giving him where to strike. But he can. Somebody already caught one. The documentary, Knowing Something Different, will be made available in December. It's being produced right here in the studios of Heartbeat Alaska. You may recognize Kathy Nungwok from Savunga. She's a member of the very famous Savunga comedy players who have traveled the world over. Travel with me now to Montana, to the Flathead Indian Reservation. Let's take a look at the beautiful Indian art. This is the home of the Salish and Kootenai tribes, the Flathead Reservation. It is located in the cultural area known as the Plateau Region, a transitional zone between the northwest coast and the plains. In this mountainous wooded setting, the plentiful array of flowers and vines give rise to the unique designs incorporated in the people's art. was caught in front of the laundromat. <laughs> Someone wanted my advice, and my advice sounded so good they decided that I should do it. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, you know, because they were talking about a thistle, and it's, and it's a lot of fun trying to figure out how to um, bring something out in a design, especially if you create it from the bottom up, because they said they wanted this, a thistle design and they showed me the thistle, 
and I pointed out when I was talking to them, just giving them advice, I said, you know, on the thistle you can see how on that particular one it's kind of fluffy. Virginia Brazil's dress cape shows a direct influence from the mountains. I took the buffalo design that Johnny Arley gave me for the front of my dress and I put it on the bottom part of my youngest son Bradley's vest and I put the mountains that I grew up with, um, the end of the Mission Mountains, Gray Wolf Peak, behind Big Medicine, the White Buffalo. Traditional art for Salish and Kootenai people exemplifies a fondness for floral design, but individual expression is paramount. When I decide to do a special project for a family or for myself, I have to think about what kind of designs am I going to do. A long time ago when I was very young, I would see my grandmother and my aunts take white paper envelopes that were used and start drawing. I also just draw on pieces of paper, but of course I don't use envelopes very often. I copied this design from a, a picture of Chief Paul Charlo, because I wanted to do very old and traditional work. I did two flowers from my brother's vest. Then I was not satisfied with just having a copy of a flower from Chief Paul Charlo's vest. The natural resources that are available in a geographic region determine to a large extent the artistic production of a group of people. Agnes Kenmill is noted for her fine buckskin, which lays the foundation for other artistic work. She is also noted for her beadwork. Oh, 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 oh. Gosh. Oh, you can put this was my home that time, 50, 50 years ago, 52 years ago, around 1932 when I stayed here moved in here, my workshop now, been really good, been good to me, nice and hot, come down here and start working at 10 o'clock, if I don't play rummy, <laughs> I'd like to thank the Salish Kootenai College for sharing their beautiful art forms with us and we'll have an opportunity to do the same for them and many other Indians across America will be able to take a look at our art. I'll be at the AFN convention, of course I'll be downstairs as well, photographing the beautiful, beautiful art displays and sales that go on every year. This year, during the AFN convention, the Mount Edgecombe Alumni Association is holding their annual dance, and it's held October 13th from 7 to 2 a.m. at the Captain Cook Hotel. And if you'd like to attend, you may call an 800 number. That's 800-478-7328. And speaking of educational institutions, earlier this week, I had the opportunity to visit with Mr. Emil Nadi and Ted Mala about the Alaska Native College. Dr. Emil Nadi and I came together talking about this problem in Juneau when I was the Commissioner of Health and Social Services and we talked about this and it was his vision that said let's talk about starting a native college. So we when some native students go to Alaska colleges, they sometimes enter classes with more students than their entire village. The Alaska Native College hopes to combat the high dropout rate and limited native curriculum. The other thing that was going on was uh, other states uh, had the similar experience as Alaska, 95% failure rate in, in, in the university system of people who start and drop out. Based on their experience when they started native colleges, they turned that around to 95% success rate. And not just, uh, just to get people through college, but they trained them in, in quality education so after two years they could move anywhere in the university system and succeed. The Alaska Native College is a great idea. 
already backed with an enthusiastic board of directors and many qualified people willing to teach. The present status, they're waiting for funding. They hesitate to put money into something that's essentially an idea at the moment. However, we have some very interesting statistics. We surveyed 500 high school kids last year, and we found out that 69% of them would enter a native college if one existed. the 127th anniversary of Alaska's oldest retail merchants, Alaska Commercial Company, at our 18 AC Value Centers. Customer service is our first priority. Does moving the capital make sense for all of Alaska? I don't like the whole idea of pitting one community against another. I think it's real divisive. Um, we did that with subsistence. There's a moral cost uh, when Alaskans deliberately destroy uh, its third largest city. I don't see any reason why uh, a few people sitting around in Wasilla deciding that they need some economic development should do it at the expense of their fellow Alaskans. I don't think anybody's going to benefit from the capital move. Vote against the capital move because it's a bill every Alaskan will pay. Before we leave today, I'd like to say hello to our new viewers in Nebraska, in Wyoming, and in Florida. It's great to have you with us, and I'd like to encourage you, please, to get out your camcorder and send us some video on the reservations and communities in your area. I'd like also to say hello to our viewers from Heritage Place in Soldotna, Alaska. It's a residential home. I understand that some elders there watch us on a regular basis, and we're honored by that. Thank you, Larson Bay Tribal Council, for the financial contribution you sent us recently to encourage our Native programming, and believe me, it's very encouraging. Before we leave today, I spoke earlier this week to the Canadian Native rock group Cashed In. They were in New York City, and we'll listen to that interview as we say goodbye. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. And could you answer this question? Why is it that you choose to sing in your native tongue? We we uh, we said usually uh, for us it, it wasn't a, a choice to do it in our own language to do it in a native language um, to do it in Inu language you know it it was just natural for us to do it uh, in our own language because we feel uh, more comfortable uh, with our. Um, our uh, language, uh, I would like to thanks to uh, all people who uh, seen the videos, you know, and because uh, uh, these people uh, encourage us to continue uh, to, to uh, sing, you know, because people, uh, they, it's people uh, are listening to us, you know, and uh, it's very great to, to have good fans over there in Alaska, you know, and uh, it's amazing because we didn't know uh, many people recognize, uh, recognize us, recognize our music over there. I didn't know that. 